Right, so I thought I'd make a little short video here on the 40 horse modifications. I know I made one of these before and I didn't cover these, some of these areas. So I thought I'd make another one and I'm going to do a comparison between this engine and the one in that car, which are both 40 horse. And they're both um, powered up. So there's some stuff you can do. Uh, first of all, I want to tell you guys that, you know, when you power up your 40 horse, if you, just, you really do have a limit. Um, because the 40 horse crankshaft will tell you that <laughs> when it cracks. So, you can, you know, if you do too much to one of these, the reason why a lot of guys aren't doing huge mods to their 40 horses um, is because the crankshafts just aren't that strong. Um, I'm going to tell you guys a real quick story about that, that, you know, that's, it's kind of a hit and miss thing. So, you know, my friend has one of those, uh, experimental planes and years ago we rebuilt the motor for it and, or it was a customer actually years ago. I thought it was my friend. I was thinking about somebody else, but it was actually a customer came to my friend's shop and, uh, he was looking to upgrade his motor on his on his plane and so we went through and man we went with like the best you know uh, counterweighted solid you know what's it called uh, forged steel crankshaft I mean went with a 1776 the, I mean that's like the most bulletproof engine VW you know you can combination you can put in didn't go stroker just kept it really you know basic so that you know it would run really really strong and we put the most powerful best crankshaft in there and it, when he went up flying he ended up breaking the crank and dropping his prop off and had to make emergency land in the middle of the desert <laughs> so but he had the 40 horse in it and the same in you know, a crankshaft break in 40 horse um, that I'm talking about it ran for years and years and years because it just would, didn't have enough power to hurt itself. So they put a 40 horse back in it and he flew it for years after that. So anyway, these crankshafts are not that strong, but they're strong enough for the airplane. That's what I was, my point I was trying to make real quick. But anyway, so if you do too much to one of these, you can actually break the crank. So, and people go, well, that's only because they raced it, you know, because they were popping the clutch really hard. Well, that would probably contribute to that, but um, uh, there is a limit, you know, just keep that in mind. And if you do do too, a lot to it, don't drive it like you stole it, you know, baby it. It's the reason you're doing the power up mod is to make it so that it climbs hills a little faster so that. When you got to accelerate past somebody in the freeway, it actually does accelerate because the old 40 horse, you floored it and it was like one, two, three, four, five. Yep, I think I went up one mile an hour. <laughs> you know, that's a, it was really not very powerful. Same with the 36 horse, but I, I didn't find much difference between the 36 and the 40s. Everybody said the 36 was slower. I'm like, they're both really super slow. So, anyway, let's talk about the mods to do the motor. Um, the first thing you do is a 1384 kit. They call it 1384. Years ago it was 1385, but I guess they figured out it's actually 1384. So 1384 kit, um, which is the big bore cylinders, um, they slip on. There's no machining necessary to put them on, and um, that gives you a lot more torque from this engine. So before before having those, you know, you might accelerate and you might not be able to really accelerate much in fourth you'd have to get in third and then fourth would just kind of slowly build up its speed um you can actually be in 35 to 45 miles an hour in fourth you know third gear shift to fourth and it'll actually still accelerate we're, we're, we didn't really do that before with the other engine um the stock muffler a lot of people want to change to the um to the single quiet pack uh, you know I've had both and the torque you get from the stock muffler actually I think offsets the power that you get you get like a couple more horsepower from the uh, from the single quiet pack if you go with the stock muffler you have more torque so 
Yeah, I don't know. I think that this torque actually works better than the uh, muffler, in my opinion. I mean, I've had both, so I don't know. But I, but I really didn't notice that much difference. It had more top end. So, like, if you put a performance cam in your 40 horse, then you put the exhaust on it. That might you might notice it more when you did that. Um, so if you're going to go with a cam, then you do the exhaust and you might get a little more out of it. But then again, like I said, you're starting to push that freaking crankshaft a little hard. So anyway, cause you're revving the motor up a lot higher RPMs and that might, I don't know. Uh, I'm not sure how that's going to end up in the long run. So a lot of people call the 1384 kit a, you know, a, a crankshaft breaker, um, you know, I haven't really had that happen, and I've ran a few of them, uh, but I don't drive them like I stole them either, so I drive these things pretty gently. Um, so, the thing that I, the difference is, and what I was going to put in this video, is this one here, I have the 40 horse rockers in, because I didn't have any more 1600 rockers. Um, this car here, I have the... Uh, 1600 rockers so what the 1600 rockers do is they basically take uh, your regular it gives you like a ratio rocker so instead of like a one and a quarter to one like you have on a 1600 when you buy the ratio rocker kit um, you have a one and about a one and an eighth to one so it gives you a lot more lift on your to open up your valves and that so I have the only difference between this car and the other one is basically that I have the same carburetor on it. I have the same, a little bit different distributor. I have the 009 on the other one, I believe. Um, I, I don't know if it really gives me that much more advance. I'm not sure. I think we're still running at the same total advance on this one as we are on the 009. So it shouldn't be that much difference. Um, and, uh, I've got that, and I've got the uh, ratio. Or the, I, have the, I have the ratio rockers on the other one, and every time that engine fires um, on the ratio rocker engine, you can it gives it a little more thump. You can actually feel it. So I'm going to recommend that if you're going to build one of these, if you're going to do it, and you're going to have it apart, if you can get a set of the the 1600 rockers, and of course you're going to have to do some spacing and some uh, and you know push rod length lengthening shortening or whatever to make it work just so you know it's not just a bolt-on thing um, I would highly recommend going to the, uh, the the ratio rockers now the other thing that you can do while you get it apart is actually put a performance cam in now then again you need to make sure that your pistons are not going to hit your um, if you're going to go performance cam Make sure your pistons are not going to hit your uh, valves with the ratio rocker. So you might want to stay kind of small on the cam. And then again, you know, the thing that the cam can do for you really quick um, is it can help you get a little bit more RPM on the freeway. And um, like this engine here and this bus. I'm running a huge cam in it with a 16 or you know with a 1776 single port and it it will rev a lot higher on the freeway and it doesn't run as hot so it's kind of an engineering thing if you put a larger cam in there is a possibility that you could actually um, make your engine run a little bit cooler on the freeway because it'll have a better advanced curve um, when you're at a higher RPM, which these engines stock, they, you know, they kind of start tapering off the power curve at like 3,500 RPMs. They don't really like to rev really high RPMs. Um, you can, they're capable of doing a lot more than that. Obviously with the stock cam though, they like to taper off. They don't like to keep giving you more horsepower after 3,500. They usually kind of just maintain it. So, um, so giving it that camshaft can give you a little more top end. So, but then again, like I said, be careful when you're going to do the ratio rockers and that. Um, but 
at minimum, if you're going to just do a, if you want to power up your 40 horse and you want to make it to run like a 1500, um, really like a, really close to 1500, all you need to do is change the cylinders and go to the ratio rockers. Um, and I did definitely notice a difference between this car and the top end on the, on the blue car. Um, it was, it's just way better. It's got more, more top end, breathes a little better at the top end. Um, it doesn't feel like a cam where it has that, you know, that, uh, power band. It doesn't have that. Um, so if it had a cam, it might actually even be better. But again, like I said, you might be running into that, that brick wall of the broken crankshaft. So anyway, um, I don't know. You might want to risk it. Heck with it. I mean, I, I, if I took it apart again, I think I'd probably just throw a cam in it just, just for fun. I mean, I'd like to throw cams and stuff anyway. I like big cams. Um, a lot of guys do. So anyway, that's just a couple pointers there for your 40 horse. Thought I'd throw that out there and talk to you guys in the next video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And uh, get that project done. Let's get you out driving.